everybody, welcome to Toronto, Ontario. Along with Ray Ferraro, I'm James Sabalski. The NHL series of video games by EA Sports is one that I've been playing for a long time, harking back to the days of Peter Forsberg on the cover of NHL 98. But now the cover is graced by hockey's own big poppy, Austin Matthews. After playing the trial of NHL 19, I decided to skip the upgrade and stick with 18, largely because the changes in the skating mechanics weren't enough to convince me to cough up another $80. But this latest edition has changed my tune. Find out why with Parquet's review of NHL 20 on Xbox One and PS4. Hammers a shot, he scores! They take the lead! So in this review, I'm focusing on the offline modes. If like me, you're based in Australia or New Zealand, you might experience a bunch of lag, which I will get to shortly. But first, let's look at the king of the offline modes, franchise. There's been a few nice quality of life improvements made to franchise mode, including the Trade Finder, which I've had a lot of fun with. Just browsing through the other team's lineups and seeing what it would cost for certain players, say McDavid or Tyler Sagan. It makes you wonder if you should pull the trigger on a blockbuster deal. Now, I'm not too fond of the Maple Leafs' current backup goalie situation, so while looking for an upgrade, I was able to fleece the Predators for UC Saros in exchange for Michael Hutchison and some draft picks which is a price I'm more than willing to pay. Being franchise mode, you'll spend a fair amount of time in the menus, and I'm happy to say everything feels smooth here. You can flick through the options without it feeling sluggish, which is something you couldn't say in previous years. You can also hire and fire coaches to help develop your team and find the right fit for your players based on their coaching schemes. Interviewing candidates is a nice little quirk to help you figure out if they'll fit within your team's market or expectations. I noticed my NHL goalie coach had the lowest rating in the staff, so I promptly fired his ass, and after some contract negotiations, I had my replacement. You really can live out your fantasy of being an NHL general manager here. But how does the game actually play? Well, the revamped skating mechanics from last year have been tinkered further and feel a lot smoother. Plus, the puck pickups have finally been cleaned up, which had been a sore point for many fans. But the biggest change for the better in NHL 20 has to be the shooting mechanics. Those improved puck pickups help create one-timers, where previously your player was more likely to whiff on the shot. Now you can pull off some pretty goals worthy of the highlight reel. Slides it across, he scores! Well, they've been hoping that the extra work they've done on the power play would help them capitalize. You do a nice job there. Going for rebounds feels more lifelike too. In previous games, I felt the best way to go for rebounds was to spam the poke check button, hoping it sneaks the puck past the goalie's pads. But now I'm noticing the AI players, or even the guy I'm controlling, more actively trying to whack away at that puck for the garbage goal. Goalies have enjoyed a nice little tune-up as well. If your netminder has good rebound control, you'll see them deflecting pucks into the corners and generally making life easier for you. The replay will show us that he's in good position and makes an excellent stick save to turn away a really good scoring chance. But speaking of defense, the skill stick remains, and it's a great way to shut down the play or block those passing lanes, but be careful because tripping penalties are again the norm. I found myself learning that lesson the hard way, and after a few games, I learned to use the poke check more sparingly. Cycling the puck is key to creating pressure when attacking, and this year, I can really feel that pressure building as I continue to search for open looks and create scoring chances. In doing so, I would groan when the puck would leave the zone, just like I do when watching a game on TV, highlighting just how immersive the gameplay can be. Here's an odd man rush! Sends it over! Whoa. Scores! And he puts his team in front! Custom goal celebrations is something that's been developed further too. It's a cool little addition for the hockey nerds out there seeing the likes of Matthews, Nylander or Line a, pulling off the kind of sellies that they've been known for. However, there are a handful of downsides that I picked up in my 20 plus hours of gameplay. And the bad blood continues with these two. Yeah, it didn't take much to bring this to a boil. They don't like each other very much. Fighting still sucks, or maybe I just suck at it, but long gone are the days of shifting to a first person perspective for the mini slugfest, now it's just a mess of button and stick mashing. It's never felt that fluid this generation and that continues here. 
You've probably noticed this by now, but the graphics are basically the same as they have been for this generation of consoles. The crowd is what it is, and some player likenesses are closer than others, but considering the team behind these games is small in comparison to the higher budget FIFA and Madden productions, yeah, this will do. Another change worth noting is the scoreboard. It's now shifted to the bottom of the screen, which is a jarring change at first. It doesn't seem as easy to take a quick glance for penalty minutes or scoring info as it was before. Now, this change might be divisive for some. It did take some time getting used to, but I'm curious to see whether or not EA persists with this idea in the future. Scores! Power play goal! Oh, critical for them to get on the board with the extra man. They move the puck well and they're able to capitalize. One of the most welcome changes in NHL 20 is the presentation, enjoying a much needed refresh. Gone is the stale NBC broadcast in favour of EA's own flavour, adding Vancouver's James Sabolski to play-by-play -play while Ray Ferraro remains in the game as the colour analyst. The problem I had with Doc and Eddie was that whether you're a fan of their real-life delivery or not, they just didn't work together all that well in the video game. The personality was lacking. But this year, the banter between Sabolski and Ferraro feels very lively, and I would say it's one NHL 20's highlights. The interactions between the two often leave me smirking with joy. Just listen to this. I got two of these in my career. I was never out at the end of the game. You 400 goals and only scored two empty netters? Yeah, when we were protecting the lead, it was safest with me sitting down. What an indictment. Oh, yeah. The other main offline mode I play is Hockey Ultimate Team, where it's all about building your dream lineup. Yes, there are microtransactions, and looking at these prices, you won't see me shelling out for the in-game currency, but gaining coins feels a lot less like a grind now. By completing daily and weekly objectives, you can be rewarded with extra coins or loan alumni players. I was able to build up my lineup pretty quickly with Wayne Gregsky, Jeremy Roenick, Matt Sundin, Ken Danico, and Al McInnes. These aren't permanent, however, as they carry either game or day limits, but you'll soon find some adequate replacements. As far as offline modes go, your main options are squad battles and hut challenges. In squad battles, you'll be pitted up against lineups from other players with the aim of earning as many battle points as possible. As your global ranking goes up, you'll receive more rewards at the end of a week-long season. Again, this helps you build your ultimate team without the need for the in-game currency, and it's a good test for your squad. Hut Challenges sees you looking to achieve certain objectives within a game while taking on teams from North America or Europe, or better yet, the alumni teams. The Capitals start with possession as we are now underway. The one annoying thing I found in doing these challenges is you can't restart the game from the menu if it seems like you won't complete the objective in time. You have to go out and start all over again. Actually, it's not the only annoying thing in the game. Play of the period highlights have been introduced, similar to what you see in an online shooter where a key moment is slowed down for dramatic effect. Now, it is a cool idea, but it's tainted by adding this unnecessary slow-mo sound effect. It gets old pretty quick. If I could play online, I think the world of Chow would be a lot of fun. You can play Pro-Am offline, but that's about it here. One's Eliminator puts you in a bracket challenge with a total of 81 players all vying for the top spot. Now, I played one game to give it a shot, but my ping was way too high, so my response time was garbage, making the action feel sluggish when really it's not. He's in! Score! Just like that, we are officially on the board! You can play one's couch co-op, however, which for someone like me could be a great way to have a couple of mates over to play some fun outdoor hockey in this 1v1v1 setup. Now, if you do prefer arcade fun over simulation, then NHL 3's is back with a revamped circuit. Instead of being a long-winded slog through CHL, AHL, and NHL teams from each region, it's broken down to just NHL teams, with players and mascots becoming unlocked as you progress. Threes is a great way to pick up and play for some NBA Jam inspired fun. It's fast paced with exaggerated hits and crazy scoring conditions. Plus, the commentator kind of reminds me a little of a certain West Auckland Admirals announcer. Scores! Ooh, sick. Oh, I'm not French. I'm just classy. 
Overall, NHL 20 is a game that will keep you coming back for more. There's a lot here to keep you busy within the franchise and hunt modes, and even more so if you're lucky enough to have a solid internet connection. Another factor for not upgrading from 18 to 19 was seeing my once beloved be a pro mode go largely untouched, and sadly, it still remains lifeless and in desperate need of a shakeup today. But the gameplay improvements and other single player additions make NHL 20 well worth your money. This is by far the most fun I've had in a hockey game for a while. I give it a solid 8.8 .8 out of 10. For more NHL 20 content, stick with Puck here NZ.